Hi, this is Decentered Media, conversations about community-focused communications for positive social change. Hello, um, Rob Watson here, Decentered Media, and this is the presentation for our drop-in, our Decentered Media meetup um, that we do every two weeks, every fortnight, and we have a topic of conversation each week, each session, uh, and then we discuss it afterwards. So uh, we, we've been talking about this this evening. I'm recording this afterwards um, and kind of wanted to uh, uh, kind of capture these thoughts um, and kind of put them into some kind of um, uh, structure which we can share and use for uh, deliberation. The notes uh, are going to be included with the blog post for the video. Um, so uh, the, 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 the idea is uh, to have a conversation about uh, evaluation methods and processes or th ways that we can think about evaluation methods and processes and some alternatives that we might want to consider amongst many other alternatives. So I'm not saying that this is, this is just too... Uh, uh, patterns of thinking that I want to explore amongst many other potential patterns of evaluation that are out there and, and are possible and it's the it's what I want to draw attention to is the kind of the distinction between the critical theory type of models of evaluation and the pragmatic models of evaluation and I think there's a really useful dif distinction that we can draw <coughs> between the two um which which will would help us to maybe look at projects in um, a different light and in a more flexible way and based on empirical examination of what's in front of us uh, rather than uh, bringing with us a kind of supposition based on um, uh, preconceived ideas um, and not, each has its own use and each, each has its own virtue and there are strong reasons for for undertaking both of them but uh, I just want to kind of uh, uh, map out why I kind of prefer uh, a more pragmatic model of uh, conceptualization and, and evaluation so um, one of the proponents of Pragmatism is uh, John Dewey, very famous uh, educate, American educationalist. And he says that democracy is more than a form of government. It's a primary mode of associated living, uh, a conjoint communicated experience. And that fits with uh, the, the kind of experience that we have of living within our communities, within our societies, within our neighbourhoods. Uh, as as well as thinking about systems and as well as thinking about uh, precepts of ethical and moral structures and ideological structures, we actually also have to live in close proximity with one another and we have to find ways to make that work and function uh, on a practical day-to-day -day level. So the pragmatic approach um, to uh, social deliberation is something that I want to kind of think around in in this conversation and what Dewey kind of talks about is the idea or, or what pragmatism uh, articulates is the idea that we need a to be informed by uh, a, a, an approach of reflexive acceptance is that we're aware of what's happening and that we accept that sense of awareness and we don't struggle against it uh, but we understand and try to consider it, how it's originated, what form it takes, uh, where it works positively, where it works negatively, and how it might be uh, useful or sustainable in the future. Um, so this is a kind of approach that requires a, a level of con collective decision making. And it relies on a sense of social intelligence, uh, whereby we come together based on empirical learning. So this isn't purely idealistic. It isn't purely uh, um, metaphysical. It doesn't just rely on supposition, but it actually relies on matching experience with practice, experience and practice with ideas. And the, the famous pragmatic adage is always well that's fine in theory how does it work in practice uh, 
And that's what produces real knowledge, uh, according to the pragmatists. So there's a, a process that we can go through which looks at um, an evaluation criteria and it looks like it looks at a situation that we want to make sense of and it says you know kind of what are the terms that open this discussion then it asks what are the terms that develop this discussion and then it asks what are the terms that close this discussion so there's a process there of uh, opening up uh, emergence of the ideas there's a process there of e uh, uh, examination and inclusion of all the factors that contribute towards a uh, understanding of a situation or an event or an occurrence or a, uh, a, a social dynamic uh, and then it's like well okay well how do we draw that to um, a, a conclusion uh, which is useful to us uh, we're not saying that it's set in stone forever but it is something of the moment which we find practical and useful for the moment and pragmatists kind of often will relate their ideas to the you know kind of diverse thinking pluralism pluralism is associated with pragmatism on the basis that the more views that we have that are not uh, overtly contradictory are something that we can work with and that we can incorporate and build on uh, but that requires an element of evidence gathering and reasoning in order to come to a, a view a shared understanding of what's happening uh, so there's a, a, a pragmatic approach which is deliberative and it's kind of democratic and it asks the question uh, what you know what uh, uh, what should we be putting emphasis on in our work and as community media communicators we might want to be thinking about that in terms of uh, inquiry or we might be wanting to think about it in terms of experimentation and we might want to be thinking about it in terms of democratic uh, understandings and view forming uh, and decision making there is an alternative which is a kind of more Rortian form of uh, uh, pragmatism which follows a model of uh, contingency and irony uh, which is where we view meanings purely as kind of temporary and contingent and dependent on the circumstances that we're, we're within and that in order to enact that we have to adopt a kind of slightly ironic perspective and I don't mean that in the kind of use of humour kind of model but the ability to switch between different modes of engagement uh, and step between them uh, so there's there's, there's a sense that the uh, the context and the form of deliberation inform what it is we think we're talking about and what we're, we're, we're understanding. Uh, so Dewey uh, kind of looked at the idea of practical knowledge and empirical learning uh, and how that was used for education and decision making and democracy. Uh, Charles Sanders Peirce, who is uh, another famous pragmatist, uh, looked at kind of the idea of uh, inquiry and experimentation in the form of knowledge as a more abstract approach. Uh, William James uh, is a famous psychologist and looked at uh, how we adopt particular point of view like religion on the basis of a pragmatic experience. And then Richard Rorty uh, kind of developed this neo-pragmatist approach which em emphasised a kind of distance or, or an ability to step away from and abstract ourselves from our social experience and uh, in a more postmodern sense he was about uh, being able to uh, step away from uh, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the game if you like and, and pull back and kind of recognise what the rules of the game are but that those games are arbitrary and, and, and can be changed. Um, and Richard Rorty says, you know, the world out there is out there, um, but the descriptions of the world are not. The descriptions of the world come from us um, and that we shape the descriptions of the world and how we use that. But we have to have agreement about what that is and that we can't just suddenly offer our own arbitrary descriptions or impose our own sense of description it has to become a common agreement and that changes over time and things do you know we, we, we get different perspectives and we change our view and we learn from our experience and we learn from our inquiry and our investigation but you know it's it's a process of learning rather than a process of you no know, we're not seeking meanings that are 
floating around. Um, we're kind of, you know, we're, we're, we're co-constructing those meanings as well. Uh, so there's a, the, the idea is that to hold a belief uh, simply means that we're able to act in a particular way. So pragmatism is linked with beliefs and actions and we find out in action what it is that we actually are talking about. So um, we, you know, we can talk about things, uh, but then we've got to do something and we we find out what our real um, intention and our real capability is when we actually get up and try and t- to do something in the world. It's one thing to be able to have a view, to hold something in theoretical terms. It's another thing to actually change the structure of society and the, uh, the, the understanding that other beings have and our fellow citizens have about the world. You know, being and action are, are you know, two separate things. But the, there is a kind of primacy that's given to lived experience and life uh, over a, a kind of abstract idea of truth and that the idea that uh, our survival and the meeting of our needs... Uh, is is something that is uh, more important to us than truthfulness and it, i suppose you know it's it 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 does seem you know in an age where a lot of people are challenging what truth means it kind of does raise some important questions about the integrity of truth and the integrity of certainty um, but I, you know, the pragmatist would maybe maybe argue that well, you know, that that truth is only as valuable as the certainty that it gives us to act, and the certainty that it gives us to to do the next thing that we intend to do. So, you know, we you know, you're boarding an aeroplane, you want to be certain that your the theory of gravity and aerodynamics and propulsion that uh, enable that aeroplane to fly are a pretty solid set of assumptions uh, and that everybody working together uh, in order to enact those assumptions are using those assumptions to do something which is purposeful so you cannot divorce our sense and idea of truth from our sense and idea of purpose and action Um, so the I mean it was only what was it 1910 that the Wright brothers flew for the first time and you know it's just incredible the way that you know the the advancement of a model of scientific empirical uh engagement with the world has enabled us to do these incredible things and build these incredible machines and use technology in a way that can take us uh, to incredible places so you know we found something which gives us a good solid bedrock um but these things you know these things again are not necessarily um held outside of human experience as being eternally truthful uh, for example our concept of gravity uh, if we look at a newtonian model of gravity it's based on a certain set of ideas but then somebody like einstein comes along and says actually you need to rethink how gravity operates and works um, and that's part of the process of investigation and we demonstrate how this works in practice. So, you know, a, a, a scientific view is uh, an empirical view, is a pragmatic view, um, but it's got to be actionable knowledge. Uh, and for society to operate and function, this has got to be part of the conversation that we have with one another. Is that it's it's all very well having our personal and private views, but we've got to be in dialogue with each each other. We've got to be able to. Um, not just report things which are in you know dreams, fantasies, uh, feelings, uh, as important as they might be, they're not the whole picture. Other people have to be able to recognise and enter the domain of shared experience rather than it just being uh, something which is of a private nature or an individual nature, which another person can comprehend. And, you know, the... Um, the shift in understanding from things you know, kind of uh, uh, dysfunction, neu- neurosis and schizo- mental illness, schizophrenia, uh, where people are caught in a loop of dis- you know, mental dysfunction uh, that isn't shared by you know, the vast majority of other people. But it is a very real experience for that person who's going through it. It's just that it's a sh- it's an experience that can't be shared and it's a unique 
uh, individual experience where we can't make our distinctions and judgments about um, what is going to be sustainable and what works and what is practical on the basis of only individual um individual experiences of 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 ideas or of, of mental states again there has to be something that goes beyond our own individual experience so we we kind of in a way have to demystify what human life is about we have to look at it and we have to say um you know the the the, the there is a pain that comes with human living there is a freedom that comes with it uh, and but there is also a sense of kind of pain and humiliation uh, and Having an open mind to uh, what that means in practice uh, is is very challenging and is something that uh, I suppose most of us struggle from. And having independent thinking and independent engagement with the world and seeing things for ourselves, uh, whereas most of the time we kind of exist in a a state, you know, almost like a herd like state. We're very happy to go with the flow. And when we're in a crowd, you know, and the things that we don't notice, the things that we don't see. But as individuals, at some point, we have to face up to the, uh, the the kind of the human experience, the individual experience that is quite challenging. Now, the question is, do we theorise about this or do we look to practice? Well, there's a combination of the two. You know, there's a, a combination that we need our theories and ideas of to draw into our mind of what we think we're anticipating and we think that we're engaging with. But uh, the practice part of what we do has to be understood as something that, you know, is a lived practice and understand something from the inside, if you like, from doing something is not just reading about it, not just hearing about it from other people, but to to love, uh, for example, is really important that you you do actually, you know, to understand what that means is, is best experienced. You can read it in as many sonnets and poems and greeting cards as, as you wish uh, but until you've been in love and you've suffered the pain and and complications that come from unrequited love then you know you, you haven't lived and that's the you know the pragmatic grounding in human experience but pragmatists don't look for answers in the metaphysical so what you, you're not saying is uh, that there is a a a a, sen- a, a a super sensory experience out there that you're not saying that there's something which guides us uh, beyond human experience. Now, there are some boundaries and slippages about what human experience is and how we understand collective human experience. Uh, what Richard Rorty says is that <laughs> truth is what your contemporaries let you get away with. Uh, which is kind of maybe a more cynical view than most people would want to adopt, um, but it's kind of um, you know it, it it it's it's kind of useful to think about as a staging point in our development. Dewey, on the other hand, was a bit more um, you know kind of uh, optimistic, I suppose, about the potential of uh, the human human society and democratic societies. Uh, and Dewey's notion of pragmatism was um, kind of more of a Darwinian, uh, his more naturalistic uh, worldview. Um, and he rejected the idea that there was a, an epistemology, a, a, a knowledge and a, a, a knowing about knowing uh, set of ideas and a metaphysics of modern, uh, uh, which was separate from kind of integrated naturalistic um, expression of understanding and being in the world um, you know we're part of the world so there's a for Dewey there was a kind of practical side to daily life which meant that we are should be understood and we should be able to consider how our society or how our politics our economics how our educational problems all interact uh, and that the thoughts or beliefs that we have are subordinated to the practical ends that we're trying to achieve. Uh, so we, we need to kind of think ahead, teleologically think, what is it we're trying to do? And how is it we're trying to do it? And and what will we is the best way to achieve that? Uh, so often pragmatism is kind of um, discarded on the basis of it being, you know, well, it, it's purely about what works. 
uh, and therefore it lacks a kind of ethics or it lacks, lacks a kind of um, uh, correctness to how it's applied because it, it's purely about the ends and not the means. Well, you know, kind of that's not really what uh, uh, Dewey was talking about because Dewey was talking about the idea that truth uh, and integrity of the process of achieving our ends is is important as well there's a a a value and a virtue to that Uh, even though that kind of sense of truth is not eternal and it's not fixed uh, but it is changeable and purposeful and practical Uh, so the, the the kind of common theme amongst the pragmatists is that there is a rejection of absolute and unchangeable truths uh and that there's an integration of mind and action uh, but we, uh, you know, for Dewey, it was it was a point. It was a case of asking, you know, kind of looking at the experimental inquiry through doing things that that was important. And Dewey viewed knowledge as resulting from uh, the discernment of correlations between events or processes of change, and inquiry uh, required uh, by an active engagement with the world. So on the one hand, there's that experience of doing things and being guided by the process of change and then you know, kind of actively participating in that as well as reflecting on that as well. And that's where the, the process, the reflexive process is situated in terms of uh, our engagement because it's about um, looking at the world and saying, how can we engage with this and how can we learn from this? Um, this differs from other forms of um, social critique and evaluation models because there's uh, a, an emphasis on problem solving. There's a focus on the commu- on, on community in a very broad sense. Uh, there's a kind of open-ended reflexivity to this, uh, which uh, you know kind of allows us to to be constantly reflecting on 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 what we're trying to achieve and how we're trying to achieve it. Um, and there's also a rejection of kind of universal principles and to say, you know, th- th- this can be good in some circumstances and bad in other circumstances. So, for example, think of a, a, a you know, industrialization and, you know, we've lived with industrialization in, in the Western world since, uh, you know, kind of the, the uh, 18th century. And yes, there were very many bad examples of industrialization but there are also good examples of industrialization and what pragmatism asks you to do is kind of separate the two out and say look at things in their own terms those areas where things are applied well and those things where things are applied badly and what are the terms that are unique to each of those uh, rather than simply looking at something and saying in under all circumstances this is bad or under all circumstances, this is good. Um, so those kind of um, need a uh, an ethical set of principles, um, but those ethical principles aren't universal. They're learned through experience. And I was asked earlier, uh, you know, how did I learn that stealing was bad? And my answer is that, well, under all circumstances, we can't say that stealing is bad. We have to look at the context and the situation. But I learned that stealing was bad by being told off by, you know, as a child, by my mother, uh, who uh, had learned from her, you know, parents and the the social conventions. Um, but, you know, what do we mean by theft? What do we mean by stealing? You know, in some circumstances, profiteering is is regarded as being a virtue uh, and you know from whose perspective are we saying that stealing is good and stealing is bad uh, there are common sense definitions to this there are economic definitions to this and in those different circumstances we apply different sets of criteria of, of evaluation and usefulness because they serve a particular function and many would argue that corporate theft largely goes unpoliced um, whereas personal and private theft is quite aggravating because as individuals we don't want our possessions to be taken from us Um, whereas industrialized corporate theft through profiteering or 
but you know, malpractice of uh, maladministration might be regarded as something you know. Hey, you get you know that that's what the market creates. So we got to tie these things down to the circumstances and look for the principles uh, within each set of contexts um, and think about the um, uh, the way in which we come to a view about those situations now this is different from a kind of critical theory type of approach which often emphasizes power relations and social structures within society so uh, the, the the idea of the imbalance economic imbalance would justify or explain away uh, the propensity for people to thieve and steal from one another um, it's put down to the imbalances in the system which uh, keeps people oppressed, uh, economically oppressed, or or due to their race or due to their um, their, their their gender, uh, and that there are these factors that are built in structurally to the system of the way that we live. So there's a systemic uh, oppression and domination. Uh, that exists within society, which critical theories kind of says, this is what structures patriarchy, capitalism, um, heteronormativity. Uh, these phrases, you know, kind of are, are, are used to explain away relationships between people. And in a broad sense, they provide uh, a, a kind of an, a, 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 a guide rail for people to follow which gives the meat gives makes sense uh, to some extent, but tell me how that works in practice is often more difficult. And I think what you do with pragmatism is you look at what works in practice, uh, and you set, you ask to address those questions rather than looking to address the whole global theoretical issues which are driven by uh, isms by ideological point of view. So there's a kind of uh, I like this idea of a difference between a kind of Anglo-Saxon approach and a, a, a continental, European continental approach, one which is grounded in uh, practical examples and one which is conceptualised and one which is kind of theorised. Um, but there's something which runs through in the critical theory model, which is about power, and that society in and people are determined by the differentials in power relationships between different groups of people and that we are structured within society as uh, either being the, uh, the, the beneficiaries and people who are privileged from uh, occupying a position of power and people who are the victims or who are marginalised in a position of, of, of an absence of power. And I think that takes us... Um, so far but it doesn't kind of really deal with the the practical problems of how to change that other than completely dismantling the system and the system never seems to be dismantled uh the system just seems to kind of it's 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 more organic um you know it's it, it the modern parlance is like we think like you know society's like a computer and we need to reboot it uh and and do a, a, an upgraded version like the matrix type idea uh but you know that's not how people operate we're a more naturalistic organic kind of approach and these distinctions and uh, uh differences between us uh to what extent are they socially constructed and to what extent are they naturalistic and are they part of our natural inclination to 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 um, hierarchalize or to manifest differences within society and i suppose what the pragmatist point of view really looks at is the idea that social issues are not just determined uh, but they are also dyna dynamic and that they can change over time and that we're not just determined by a set of principles which are set in stone forever and that we're always going to be bound by these principles, these ideas of uh, structuring ideas of power and ideology. But actually there's something there which is you know, kind of shapes our lives in a more fluid way because things do change and things move on and 
new things happen and people come to different understandings we evolve uh, socially we evolve different ideas take hold within society for good or ill but there's a change and there's a dynamic process and we're not static and as human beings you know we're not programmable uh, as dupes as purely uh, false conscience false consciousness carriers uh, but that we are you know kind of we have a way of working things out we are and we are creatures animals uh, that carry the capacity to reason um which is what kant you know kind of uh, uh codified and described in his writings um which is separate from and different from thinking about power uh pure purely in terms of thinking about power so what we put an emphasis on in pragmatism is the sense of problem solving the sense of a kind of community or where we look at different perspectives and try to look at the problems from different points of view and try and integrate those holistically integrate them and that we think about this as a process an ongoing process of examination and explanation and discovery um, because what we want to do is we want to broaden that sense of inquiry that community of inquiry and ask other questions that you know we we're never fixed we're never finished we can never say that this is the absolute point and this is what happens because another generation emerges and they have a different perspective and they take different ideas and they have different experiences which shape the way that we think in different ways so we're always constantly looking at uh, inquiry and experimentation in order to facilitate our democratic decision making and thinking um there's a kind of advantages to this in that we uh, you know in terms of problem solving um we think it can lead to more effective and efficient uh, decision making uh, looking at you know real life problems and addressing specific problems uh, is that we can um, come up with a, a a range of solutions which can be addressed different circumstances rather than applying a one fits all, one size fits all answer to everything so a more pluralistic response uh, avoiding group think um, and uh, respecting uh, individual um, agency and individual ability to say, you know, to not follow the crowd and to not follow what everybody else says, uh, but to think, you know, kind of think for yourself, um, but also to, you know, to really keep this open to uh, revision and to be constantly looking at your assumptions of saying, well, you know, we, we, we have this assumption now, but how will it be tested in the future how will we uh, return to this in the future um and how how will it be broadened out and how will it change in the future and to be constantly open to the idea that our you know the, the things will change and that our ideas and our perspective changes with age changes with experience changes with uh you know generational insight and moves you know kind of perspective changes how we think about things but the the you know, there, 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 there is no Archimedean point from which we can adjudicate any of this. We cannot step outside of human experience to measure this. There is no point beyond, metaphysical point beyond human experience that says, now you can grasp this and you can fully understand it. Now, we are bound by our human experience and we have to come to terms with what that means in practice. So anything that is outside of that an, uh, an ideology, if you like, is the equivalent of a, 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 a metaphysical uh, expectation. History. What is history? You know, the 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 inevitable uh, process, the inevitable forces of change uh, that direct us towards uh, a, a, an end point, a, a movement towards social justice. Well, that. <laughs> does that exist you know does that kind of inevitability is that a realistic expectation to have or if we kind of ground ourselves in reality in the naturalistic experience then we allow things to open up in in a different way so the kind of focus of pragmatism is often about truth and that truth is a truth is a goal for our inquiry uh, you know we want a sense of 
truthfulness about what we can depend on and that we don't want this to be something which is you know, everybody can apply their own truth and that there are alternative truths out there we kind of do have to in order to to get along to you know as i say to board the airplane everybody has to believe and understand not just believe and wish but understand that the airplane is going to fly because you've applied a critical form of reasoning that says that you know this is these these principles work um so there is a dependence on truthfulness uh but that is a product of a kind of controlled form of inquiry the scientific method engineering science um you know there's a, there's something that's going on there that in it, it tells us which um it can be examined it you know it, it's not just a claim that's made it's something that can be replicated it's something that can be tested by other people it's something that can be you know opened up for investigation and you will find the constituent components of how it works in that sense of inquiry um but the it's driven by the context of it serves a purpose within a specific time period and a specific society to have these truths there to have these truths working and operable uh, because if they as things move on and change you might no longer accept that these truths are what you needed them for uh, and we have a need for certain kinds of truths and in modern western technological society these truths are based on uh, precepts of science scientific knowledge and engineering um, rather than you know you know wish wish fulfillment or or dreamlike fantasies uh, but that's not to say that those ideas don't come about because of wish fulfillment and dream fantasies. Uh, you know, we have our imagination, which works in a different way from our practical reality. And maybe that's a, a conversation for another uh, another put another time. But, you know, we have to have a conversation about this. We use our language and we use our, our symbolic representations to come to an agreement about what these things mean. What is something? What, what it's commonly understood to be. Um, you know, the bicycles behind me serve a specific purpose and they're commonly recognised as as functioning in this particular way um, at this particular time. But they look very different from bicycles that were commonly available in the 19th century. Uh, so, you know, these things, the, the forms aren't fixed. Uh, they adapt and they change. And our sense of our ideation about what these things are changes as well um so there is a kind of sense that truth is a social construct the problem is is that you being a pragmatist isn't being a relativist it isn't about saying that well any truth goes and that any sense of truth goes and we have some issues at the moment about gender identity that suggest that um any kind of truth goes you can re you can project a sense of a gender identity uh, which contradicts your biological sex idea based identity because you are uh, uh, using a relativistic form of truthfulness well you know it, it, it only gets you so far you know it, it you know as Richard Rorty says, you know, it's kind of it only only gets it, concepts are only as useful as they bake your bread. And if you're misapplying concepts within the context of the wider social sphere uh, and you're trying to be something that you're not um, or you're trying to do something which is uh, uh, beyond the realms of your you know, the, the craze when I was a kid was for people to think that kids to think that they were Spider-Man or Superman, very impressionable, impressionable children who were caught up in the fantasies of films and comic books. Um, but reality takes over and gravity usually takes over. And, you know, the accident and emergency departments in hospitals were full of kids whose delusions and fantasies were broken. Quite literally, their bones were broken by the, you know, the thud of reality. And, you know, that, that, that is something that's ever present with us. So kind of in terms of thinking about community media then and the purpose of this for a pragmatic sense of social deliberation and evaluation, I think that the advantage of this is that um, pragmatism offers a possibility and to, to really explore a practical sense of knowledge. 
And one of the things that we always say about community radio, for example, is you really have to get involved and be part of this to understand what it's about and how it works. You can't just read about it. And it's, you know, get, if you want to come in and understand how community media works, volunteer in your local community media organisation or community radio station and start making programmes and start communicating with other people because you then realise that the the ideas that you have about the world in your own head and the way that you think the world ought to be, they face the reality that you... Uh, 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 it was said earlier, and I thought it was a great way of phrasing it, is that you know it's all very well being virtuous within the cave, uh, but you have to come out of the cave at some point and engage with other people. We're not hermits, and we can't live just purely by you know kind of the images that are projected onto the wall of the cave we have to step outside of that and it has to be a practical uh, context specific uh, uh, process of uh, testing our ideas and our experiences uh, and and making decisions really though on the basis that we're open to the idea that those decisions can be tested and changed so I, i'm kind of a um you know the, the the pragmatic model i've kind of reminded myself in a way why uh the process of rejecting an ideological view has been important to me uh because the it only takes us so far to be able to prescribe something within an ideological framework i'm not uh rejecting the lessons that an ideological view can point us towards it allows us to structure uh, power relations and power relations are real you know power relations do exist um but they there's a kind of if you only ever ascribe things to ideology if you only ever ascribe things to a kind of metaphysical point of view then you are not looking at the world as it actually is and our job is to as the, the job of the social scientist is to engage with the world and look at the world through our practical reasoned experience and uh you know explain that with colleagues and friends and fellow citizens to come to a view and say well this is this 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 is what's going on uh and and you know paint a picture tell stories about what that might be and how that might work um and it's about you know that kind of level of association uh, where we have a common ground uh, and a common sense of purpose uh, it, which we use to uh, uh, which we've drawn from our experiences and our, our, our uh, inqu- ability to inquire about what it is that's actually going on just you know, looking at something and assuming this is what's going on isn't good enough we have to test it I'm a, I, I, you know the phrase I use a lot uh, for in terms of the context of academics is we're not uh, academics are not here to to celebrate an idea we're here to test them um, and we have to test that against uh, the real world and you know I, I, Einstein you know was very very keen to see his theories tested in practice he he was a great incredible th- you know, theoretical abstract thinker intuitive you know model builder but he wanted to know whether his 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 work was something that was applied that that actually occurred in the universe he worked it out using mathematics uh, but what he really wanted was the validation of seeing it in the world uh, and through sensory experience and and observation and that process opens opens the world the universe out to us so we have a kind of there's the the two sides of this really is that um we need to focus on the objects and bringing looking at things and examining them and understanding what they are and what how they function and how things work but also looking at meaning and how we generate and create meaning in the world because you know as as we can objectify things but we also have to uh, think about the way that we find that experience meaningful and we human beings are the only meaning creators that we know of in the universe so that is not a simple process to deal with it's dynamic it interacts it 
intermixers and we should be aware of the process and we should reflect on that process of thinking this is not just about um, categorizing things it's also about asking the question of how this makes us feel and 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 what it does in terms of shaping our uh, sense of wonder and joy about the world anyway okay so that's uh that's the kind of summary of of uh, a very poor summary of prag- my understanding of pragmatism and it's a while since I've written about pragmatism so a lot of this is is not fresh in my mind uh, and but the notes that I managed to get uh, from online I'll share on the, the the blog as well for this um so yeah so if you want to find out more about the work that uh, I do through decentered media go to decentered.co.uk uh, and you can follow and engage with me through Twitter and Instagram at Decentered Media. And I'll be, uh, you know, kind of doing these conversations and discussions on a regular basis. And hopefully uh, we'll be able to have a conversation soon. But until next time, um, thank you very much. Visit decentered.co.uk or follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Decentered Media.